finding problems that's easy. They exist in every community. I'm Terry Springs, your host. We're looking deeper, and we are talking solutions, finding out how we all can make a difference. Today on Talking Solutions, Melanoma Awareness, we're going to also talk about Relay for Life, and we'll talk with the American Cancer Society. Josiah, Shelley, Jennifer, thanks so much for coming in. Thank Thank you you very much. Thanks for having us. The first thing that I mentioned was melanoma, something that really resonates with me. One of my closest friends passed less than two years ago from melanoma. Shelley, I'd been talking to Carol with American Cancer Society, setting up this interview, and she was telling me that I was going to be having a cancer survivor, am I guessing that's you. Thank tell me you. your story. I was diagnosed in 2007. I always tell people it looked like my mole had a mole. It was very typical to what you'd see on any of the literature on melanoma. So I went to the doctor and was trying to not have my mom bug me about this mole anymore. He said that's definitely melanoma and I didn't know what that would mean. So I had my first excision taking the mole off to be biopsied in 2007 in June. And I would have three more surgeries in the next four weeks and they needed to do a wider excision. It still came back with cancer. They needed to take one lymph node that came back with cancer until they took all the lymph nodes underneath for my final surgery. The friend that I referred to, her name was Shirley. She had a situation where it was on the back of her calf, a spot that bled a lot, so she wanted to get it checked out. They took 20 or 30 lymph nodes of hers. And Shelly, when you talk about the cancer affecting the lymph nodes, basically it's spreading throughout your body, right? It is. My armpit itch very bad. So I changed deodorants, I changed soaps, everything, not knowing that that's what was happening inside my body. And just this simple mole that looked like, as you said, a mole on a mole. And very small, like the size of a pencil eraser. It was on my upper arm. Calves tend to be what women show melanoma in, but mine was on my upper arm. And so my lymph nodes underneath my armpit were taken after that. We all love to be in the sun here in Southern (laughs) Nevada, which I think makes it an even more important topic to discuss here on Talking Solutions. But melanoma is far deadlier than most people realize. I was looking at some of the stats. Every 59 minutes, someone in the U.S. dies from melanoma. That's true. Of the three skin cancers, melanoma is the deadliest. I've also had two other skin cancers after that, but melanoma was my worst and roughest journey. When you were going through all of this treatment, through everything related to your melanoma on your arm, on that mole, you said you had multiple surgeries. Mm -hmm. Did it take you off work? Were you on all kinds of drugs? What was happening in your life because of this simple little mole? I actually didn't work for six years. Did not know that it would affect how I feel, how I can move throughout the day. I was put into garments wrapped up for my arm to cause the swelling to go down. Because once you have your lymph nodes removed, you have the chance of having lymphedema afterwards. And that's what was more debilitating. So even though I got through my four surgeries, I was then left with something I'll battle the rest of my life. So it's not just an end with the surgeries or an end with the treatment all the time. This happened in 2007? 2007. And it's not ever going to end as far as you watching for No, because I was diagnosed two more times in the last nine years with basal cell. That's also one of the easier skin cancers, but not always so easy. I then had my scars keloid and had to have treatment for that. So it just seems to be ongoing. And what I was told was that it's what you do between the ages of 13 and 25. And it can continue to show up no matter how much sunscreen and protection I use for the rest of my life. It's a very good thing to point out because we do hear that kids, especially teens, are so indestructible. (laughs) And I remember we had a high school radio station back in Kansas back in the day. It was a long time ago. We'd go out and we'd do car washes, raise money for our cause, and we would get these blistering sunburns. We did not care for ourselves with sun protection or covering ourselves properly from the sun. There's amazing after effects. Jennifer, you're with the American Cancer Society. I'm sure that you talk about all kinds of different cancers, but specifically on melanoma, 13 to 25, you said, Shelley? Yes. During those early life years, the things you do have impact that can come back and affect you way down the road. Yeah, and as Shelley was talking, I was thinking about most of our educational materials around skin cancer are really geared towards parents, making sure that parents understand how to protect their children's skin and to educate themselves and their children. You know, we always talk about slip, slap, slop. 
slip on a shirt, slap on some sunscreen, slap on a hat and make sure that you're covered because the best thing that you can do to protect your skin is cover up. And sunscreen's a part of that, but having on long sleeves, it might be hot outside, but covering with clothing is the best thing you can do. You could do a light cotton longer sleeve shirt, cover that skin, yeah. and it would help. Jennifer, when you say that with the American Cancer Society, one of the things that you try to do with melanoma is educate the parents. Mm-hmm. If we instill in our children at an early age the importance of protecting themselves from the sun, that can make a lifetime of difference. Absolutely. I have two small children at home and we have a rule. If you're not wearing your hat, you can't play outside. And, you know, if it's a cloudy day, it can still be at risk. But, you know, we'll be a little flexible then. But if it's a sunny day and they're playing outside, they have to have their hats on. And I have their little toe head kids. You know, I'm worried not only about their arms and legs, but their scalps and their ears. My dad has had several cancers removed just from the backs of his ears. So I think we have to be very careful. A friend of mine here in the building golfs a lot and has for decades. I know that he's gone in several times. He had basal cell. He had a secondary one that started with the letter S. Squamous cell. Squamous cell. I'll learn these as we go (laughs) along. But being out and playing on a golf course on a very hot summer day here in Las Vegas or anywhere exposes you to a lot of risk. There are sun protectants. I never remember seeing a 50 SPF for children, but they've gotten a lot better about making those available on the market. What we hear is that you have to go with a minimum of 30. So if you are looking for a 30, you'll probably be okay. It's just a matter of remembering to put it on, to reapply it. If you're swimming, if you're sweating, reapply. And I just recently was out at a parade and it was a nice cool day, but the sun was shining. I just wasn't even thinking. At one point I got warm and I took my jacket off. And of course that's when I got sunburned. It's not just when it's a hot day outside that we have to pay attention. That's when you think about it sometimes, but keep in mind those sunny days can get you even if it's cool outside. That phrase is pretty important because it can lead to such consequences. I wasn't thinking. Mm -hmm. My worst burn was on an overcast day. I ended up with fourth degree burns from the sun. And like you say, it's an overcast day. You don't think about it. I didn't feel my skin burning. So I didn't think there was a problem. They say one of the things about living here in Southern Nevada also is the fact that our humidity is so low, you don't feel it until you're well into it. Mm-hmm. Josiah, what is your story with melanoma or the Cancer Society or Relay for Life, all topics that we'll be discussing today? I've been working with Shelly. She's one of our great volunteer leads with Relay for Life. It's a worldwide fundraising event, and Shelly runs the one that we have up in the Northwest in Centennial. She's doing a fantastic job, and I'm here to make sure that she gets everything she needs, and we work very closely together to make sure it happens and goes off well. We've had a couple other ones here in Southern Nevada leading up to this. The one that you're talking about, Josiah and Shelley, is coming up at Centennial High School, May mm-hmm. 21st and 22nd. Is that right? Yes. 9 a.m. to 9 a.m., 24 hours. It's one of those overnight things. I've been there late mm-hmm. in the evening. It's quite <laughs> interesting. So for someone who hasn't attended a Relay for Life event, tell them what they're getting in on. You're going to come and you're going to do three very important things. Celebrate those that we have still with us, those currently battling or that have beaten cancer. We are going to remember those that we have lost and we are going to fight back. And that's the action that we're taking while we're walking the track. We are fighting back. We are raising money. We're raising awareness. Those three things are going to be very key and very evident during the event. But it's going to have a very festive type atmosphere because we do want to celebrate life. We want to remember that every day is precious. And when we do that, we want to experience things like games and family and community. And that's the feeling that you get when you go to a Relay for Life. You get this sense that you are part of a community. We like to say a relay family. Once you go to relay, you are part of the relay family and you will always be part of the relay family. There's a lot going on. I've been up on the stage in the evening. We were providing snacks and beverages and there was music and there were balloons and there were candles to help remember the people who we had sadly lost to Mm -hmm. one form or another of cancer. Mm -hmm. There's a lot going on and I don't think I've ever met anybody who came out to a Relay for Life event by themselves. Mm -hmm. They always bring Bring a carload, a busload. It's a whole group from school. It's a gang from church. It's the people from work. It's your family. It's your neighborhood. Mm-hmm. Everybody is invited to be part of this event. Oh, yes. And it's just one of those things that you can't go to a Relay for Life event and say, eh, it was okay. It's a memorable experience no matter what. And we have some great ceremonies. Our luminary ceremony is just absolutely amazing. If you can only make it during a short period of time, come during the luminary ceremony because that's going to be the one that's going to leave lifelong impressions. I remember people walking around the track at the high school, around and around and around. (laughs) 
I don't want anybody to think that if they participate in Relay for Life, that A, they have to stay up all night and walk the track nonstop. Mm -hmm. There's more to it than that. Mm -hmm. That's always the first question. Am I going to be walking for 24 hours? (laughs) I just have to chuckle. No. Somebody from your team should be on the field at all times. But no, it's not left up to one person. Although that is how it started with just one person walking the track for 24 hours. But more people working together can make a much bigger impact. (laughs) Real Life for Life, I know that we had an event in Henderson. We had one here in Las Vegas. Vegas. Now it's going to be Centennial High School. It's not just people in that immediate neighborhood that are invited to be part of this overnight event. Not at all. A few of our teams are coming out from Henderson. I talked and they met me personally, so they wanted to come to my event at the Centennial High School. And so everybody's invited. It's definitely a community event. And Las Vegas is a great community. That's what people from out of town don't realize. This is such a special place. (laughs) I talk about that all the time. Once you're in here and you understand the quality of the people that we have, the way that we all give and support one another. Growing up here, I definitely want to give back to my community. I want to make an impact. We want to make sure that we also remind everyone we're talking today on Talking Solutions about melanoma awareness, different fundraisers with the American Cancer Society. We're discussing Relay for Life and the next event coming up at Centennial High School, May 21st and 22nd. One of the things, too, for all of you guys, for people who are listening today, what sorts of things they can do to help protect themselves. For instance, in a situation where you might have something that turns out to be melanoma that is truly a risk not only to your health but to your life. Shelly, what do you as a melanoma survivor suggest that I can do to help protect myself? And the first things are definitely prevention and early detection was key. If I had listened to all the people in my life telling me, Shelly, that mole looks a little different, you should get it checked out, it probably wouldn't have been stage three. So definitely prevention and early detection, like Jennifer said, our goal is to educate the community. I speak speak at Girl Scout troops and all that, trying to educate our youth. Because if you don't educate them, like my mom didn't know, I should have sunblock on. And being out by the water attracted the sun more. So education, education, education is all I can impress on people. After that would be early detection. If you feel something is not right, go see a doctor. I'm hyper aware of danger relating to melanoma, especially because I lost my very close friend, lost another older family friend in the same year, both from melanoma back where I'm from in Kansas, but I'm always really worried. Jennifer, do you have some idea? What do we do as far as monitoring and keeping track? Because truly the marks, the moles on your body, they change over time. Absolutely. If you live with somebody else in your household, team up. You look at their back, they look at your back. You don't have to be terribly uncomfortable with these things. Just pop on a robe and say, hey, can you look at my back real quick and make sure if you constantly have that partner in crime, they'll make sure that you're looking okay and vice versa. That's at a bare minimum, okay? Otherwise, you should really have an annual appointment with a dermatologist to have them check everything, make sure your skin looks good. I go every six months basically to see my dermatologist. I don't have any problems. I'd like to keep it that way. And I rely on that dermatologist to check every inch of my body and tell me that things are looking good. And even though I have a husband at home, he might overlook something. I'd like the doctor to... (laughs) Is he not paying as close attention as you might suggest? I don't know. Maybe not as close as a doctor. Exactly. So at least the doctor doctor has the six month records and takes pictures and pays attention. And that's what I'm really after. Yeah. And we do want to watch things that change over time. Because Mm -hmm. as you said, early detection is key. And Shelly was a melanoma survivor talking to Girl Scout troops. Young people really need the knowledge that excessive sun exposure and what's happening in their lives between about what are the ages again? 13 to 25. That's the critical time frame. Not like we should all ignore it at any other time, but especially be aware that during those formative years that we're taking extra care and parents are taking extra care to make sure their kids are covered. Key is education. Since I've partnered with the American Cancer Society and volunteered for them, they've provided me absolutely every statistic and detail, which doesn't always catch kids' eyes. So I come out with sometimes stickers and sunblock and really teaching them. I even spoke at the cosmetology school to the estheticians to not be afraid to say to somebody, yeah, I would get that checked out. Really smart thing to do. We got some pretty intense sun here in Southern Nevada. It, but it can truly happen anywhere. Josiah, how did you get involved with the Relay for Life <laughs> yes. with Shelley at mm-hmm. Centennial High School on May 21st and 22nd? Well, my journey with American Cancer Society started back when I was in high school. It's been a passion of mine, and it started before I knew anybody with cancer. I don't know what it was. I like to thank my mom because she instilled a desire to help 
people in me. But as time goes, and I don't think there are many people nowadays that can say that they haven't had an experience with cancer, whether knowing somebody or what have you. But my father passed away from brain cancer a couple of years ago. My best friend's mother passed away from cancer. My grandmother passed away from cancer. So even though it started as just a good thing to do, it really has grown into a passion and a desire to not have people go through the things that cancer patients go through and their families go through. When somebody hears the words, you have cancer, it doesn't only affect them, it affects everybody around them. And that's where I'm at. And I started with the American Cancer Study as a staff person back in July of last year with the Relay for Life program because it's a fun event. And I like to get people out there and saying, you don't have to be a doctor or you don't have to be an expert to make a difference in the fight against cancer. You can be a 10-year-old kid bringing your pennies and your dimes and nickels to the American Cancer Society. And that will go to help fund research and programs and services. I love that. We always ask as part of Talking Solutions, how can we help you? It doesn't have to be any huge thing, an hour of volunteering a month or a year or $5. It all goes to help the cause. I think that that's one of the best ways that the community can get involved. It's just something. It doesn't have to be huge. When someone volunteers for a Relay for Life or for a general help with the American Cancer Society, what sort of tasks do they end up performing? We have so many different varieties. Volunteers at every level of our organizations, temporary volunteers that just come out to the day of event and help set up or help drive folks to and from their treatments. We have a road to recovery program, variety of different things. So you can help plan the events. You can help organize the events. Basically anything that you want to do, we have a spot for you. What a great way to honor someone in your life who has been affected by cancer. Perhaps you lost someone Mm -hmm. to honor them with whatever you can. When you see one person walking around a track, holding vigil for those that we've lost or honoring those that are continuing the battle, it touches something and it means so much more than a lot of people think. Hey, Mm -hmm. and a little side benefit, we'll all be healthier if we move. (laughs) (laughs) We are all about healthy living. I'm thinking win-win here. Yes. Where does somebody get information specifically, in fact, about the Relay for Life? We have the RelayForLife.org. And depending on where you're living, you can put in your zip code and find the event that is closest to you. But we do have Facebook pages for all of our events. It's RFL Centennial. Yes, for Twitter. And we tag everything. RFL Centennial. RFL Centennial. Mm -hmm. Yes. Jennifer, from the standpoint of the American Cancer Society, when people approach you, are they looking for information, for assistance? for help, all of the above? Yes, 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 yes. We find that the moment a person hears the words that they have cancer, the first thing they want is information. The American Cancer Society is the number one source of cancer information in the world. If you visit our website, cancer.org, there are thousands of pages on all types of cancer that will help people start to navigate their journey. We also have a 1-800 number, 800 227 Four, five. That phone number is available 365 days out of the year, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You will find a cancer specialist on the other end of that line. They can answer the calls in any language. They'll have translators available to make that happen. So anybody can call our 800 number for help at any time to understand more about what they can expect from their cancer journey. There are oncology nurses on staff there that if the questions get too technical for the person who picks up the phone. They can schedule an appointment with one of those oncology nurses to make sure that they can get into some more detail about what to expect. So there's a lot of information available for cancer patients. And what we want folks to know in the community from the American Cancer Society is that you are not alone. If you need to call somebody at three o'clock in the morning to have a conversation about what you're feeling, then call us. We are there for you all the time. And whether it's that phone call or coming out to a Relay for Life event or stopping by our office to see what they can do to get involved, we're there and we'll be glad to engage with this community and hope that everybody who has been affected by cancer knows that they have a home with the American Cancer Society. And the number that Jennifer was just talking about, the 24-7 contact us to find out about cancer is 800-227-2345 at cancer.org. Mm-hmm. Keep it simple. <laughs> it works for me, cancer.org. And as far as the Relay for Life event that's coming up at Centennial High School starting on May 20th, 21st and ending on May 22nd for a 24-hour period. Find out about that at RFL Centennial NV. RFL Centennial NV. 
does it cost anything for people to sign up? What do you do if you want to get people involved with Relay for Life? Nope. Just find friends, family, coworkers, neighbors to join you. And a team could be one. It could be a hundred. Sign up online. Come out to Centennial High School at the football field there and join us for the day, for the night. <laughs> <laughs> the last one I was at was an event a few years back in North Las Vegas. They had tents and all kinds of stuff set up. People were kind of camping out overnight, having a good time, getting involved. They'd trade off as far as people walking the track. We had a band playing, announcements going out, snacks and beverages, and it just was a lot of fun. And even if you can't stay all night, just come out for a few hours. If you work a certain shift and you get off at 8 o'clock at night or 8 o'clock in the morning, come out and check it out for a little while. That is a good idea, Jennifer. And like you were saying, Josiah, if they can only come out for one period of time, you Mm. would suggest the luminarias. Yeah, and that takes place after sunset. Ours is actually at 11. 11. And we chose that to be a little bit of symbolism. It's the end of the day, and at midnight, we will pump it back up, and it's a new day, a new beginning. So that was why we chose 11 o'clock. Well, we want to encourage everybody to come out. We all know someone who has been (laughs) affected by cancer, so let's go out and show our support. It's just a good time. My two-year-old loves it. My four-year-old loves it. It doesn't matter your age. It's a good time to come out and play and just have a nice afternoon in the sun. It wouldn't be a bad thing either to be able to be out there and talk to other people who also have been affected in some way by cancer. This weekend, I spoke to somebody who was just starting their journey and was just diagnosed, had not even begun treatments or surgery or anything. And his family was very thankful to get my own personal number because that's one of the programs also is Reach to Recovery to pair you with somebody else who's already been down that journey that you're just starting. It's a great place to find that at a Relay for Life event. There are so many things that people go through when they're newly diagnosed. They go through the whole denial phase and we have the different phases of any kind of an illness like that. But to have someone who's already been on the other side of it like you. Shelly, that kind of insight, that warm, welcoming, I'm here to talk, whatever you need, just to give that extra information is so helpful. And even for their caregivers, it was a gentleman who was diagnosed and his wife asked me about what my husband went through. So those caregivers, they need that information too, and they can get that same help from the American Cancer Society. Lots of resources and a good time coming up. I'm looking forward to this. <laughs> Relay for Life, May 21st into the 22nd. You said it's from 9 a.m. to 9 a.m.? Yes. So it's all night party. It is. <laughs> Big gathering. Everybody's invited. It doesn't cost you anything. And it's just really a lot of fun. So it's going to be at Centennial High School. The information can be found at RFL Centennial NV. Yes. And also RelayForLife.org slash Centennial NV. That will get you right to the actual website to sign up. Sign up today and come out. We have activities and different bands and just serendipity is coming out. So there's comedians. There's all kinds of stuff that makes this event a whole. We have businesses who have donated, whether it's financially or to our survivor bags. There's so many ways to be a part of Relay. It doesn't necessarily mean if somebody can't come out that day that they can't be a part of it. Relay for life. Oh, that must be a really sad event. (laughs) Far from it. He's really depressed. It doesn't sound like a depressing event at all. Not at all. I will say that doing Luminaria, there's probably not a dry eye on the field, but that will be the only time. Unless you're sharing stories, because that is what Relay for Life event is about, is sharing your story, whether it's the National Honor Society who is getting their volunteer hours to somebody who lost their parent. We all really fit in that category somewhere. So you might as well get involved with Relay for Life. Definitely. Centennial High School, May 21st and 22nd. One thing I'd mention is that a cancer survivor in the American Cancer Society's eyes is at the moment of diagnosis. So the moment you hear the words, you have cancer, we consider you a cancer survivor. You're living through it every single day. And that's important to mention because cancer survivors are the reason that we relay. They are who we celebrate. They are VIPs the day of relay for life. So if you are a cancer survivor, please come out. Enjoy the party. It's all about you. If you know a cancer survivor, bring them out with you. If you've lost someone to cancer and you were their caregiver, know that there's a place for you too at Relay for Life and we'll make sure we take care of you. I like your positive attitude. From day one of being diagnosed with a cancer, the next you're breath. considered a cancer survivor. Mm-hmm. All right, Josiah, what else do you want to leave people with? No matter how small you think your contribution is, it means something. That's what I like about the American Cancer Society and Relay for Life. Don't think that what you do is insignificant because it's not. So do what you can and it will be appreciated 
And we'll plan on seeing you. Oh, yes. At Relay for Life at Centennial, May 21st and 22nd. Shelly, you are in charge of this event? I am. We are an 80s theme this year, so get your leg warmers out and <laughs> come out. I know I'll be out there and definitely invite the community and, and don't forget your sunscreen. Mullet optional. <laughs> what a great talk. Josiah, Shelly, Jennifer, talking about melanoma, the Relay for Life, the American Cancer Society. Thank you so much for coming in today for Talking Solutions. Thank Thanks you for Thank you very much.